I feel like these are just too snug. I'm gonna trim these down. I cut these too precisely, and if they're too precise, I can't, you know, it's just too hard to get them to fit right. Yeah. One, two, buckle on a shoe. Three. So this one, I believe, is also. Well, guys, you might be able to see what I'm working on here. I'm clamping the tongue groove boards together to form my cabinet sidewall. And then I'm just putting these pieces of wood across to tie them together. So these are actually going to serve as our shelf supports and as structural supports to keep all this wood together. So I'm screwing them in a pattern that it'll hold each board where the tongue and groove interlock, holding them all together. And so far I'm very happy with it. And I'm almost done with one side. We still have to do the whole other side. Sorry for taking up so much space here. We're all taking up so much space. Does it just look like a skateboard? Yep. Yep. Okay. It just has to go down. Try to shove it over. Keep going. Well guys, I just wanted to show you, we have the start of something here. As you can see, we got the two sides up and it's starting to take shape. It's still a little wobbly, I gotta put supports at the top and then I'm gonna put all the shelves in and that's gonna give a lot of strength. But the cabinet is started, you can see the white side. We got a lot of sun coming in right now so it's a little hard to see but it's coming together. You can see all these shelf supports in here. We're gonna get the shelves in right now. So the shelves are going to be going in here just like this and probably back against the wall. They're a little bit loose fit so I'm going to have either a gap at the front or a gap at the back. I'm going to say gap at the front. Last night I finished screwing all these shelves down. So these are secure, the cabinet is solid. And now we just have to get the face frame on. I've been working on it. It's kind of hard to show you guys in here, but I basically just pocket hold a white face frame together. That's gonna fit right on the front. Let me turn it around. You can see how those are joined. Joined right there. And I'm gonna be attaching it right to the front of the cabinet to face it out. And this is going to be where the cabinet doors attach. So you won't be seeing this brown when it's all closed up. So I'll probably just finish nail that right to the face of this and then we'll hole fill. I'm only waiting because I'm gonna be adding one more piece of wood over here as a spacer. So I'm gonna get my spacer ready just to push it off this wall a little bit. And once I get that attached on there, we'll get this all secured. Then we can slide the cabinet into place and secure it. After this is secured, we're going to actually go through and do a one more coat of finish on all the exposed surfaces. And I don't have that. I had to order more. So it might take a few days. So we'll see. And we might have to move on to another project in the meantime, but this will be finished very soon. That's actually so perfect that I'm just gonna leave it. You can see I put my spacer in here. I'm gonna go get some cabinet screws, screw this to the wall. Okay guys, the cabinet is done. I have it secured to the wall. This thing is solid. We have a ton of storage, way more than the old cabinet we were using, and I'm happy with it. It looks really good. Now someday we'll make our doors for this. It'll be white doors, 
two of them that open up and it's going to be really neat. You can see I put my spacer in here. It sticks out. You'll see how that's going to look later. It's going to tie into the trim. I think we have committed to white trim in the kitchen. I think it's going to look really neat. I'm happy with this. This looks like it belongs here. It looks like it was something that would have been here when we moved in. All made out of wood, handmade. It blends into the house. So I just wanted to show you guys the final result and this is the only way I'm able to show it to you because this thing is tall. Touching the ceiling and eventually we'll crown mold it so that you don't see the crack. It's going to be really neat looking. And using these tongue and groove boards on the side here, it just adds a nice touch. That's why we decided to do this because it just adds the same visual interest that these have into the cabinet, but these being vertical separates it from the wall. I didn't want lines intersecting and, and looking weird. Very pleased with it. I'm going to wait for my final finished product to come. We're going to wax the whole cabinet. We'll get our food in here. It's going to be awesome. We can start working on other things like our kitchen sink. Speaking of the sink, here it is. I'm going to get started on it. So we've decided we're just going to try to sand off all the rust, see what we're working with, and take it one step at a time, and I think we can bring this back to life. That was pretty easy, just a little clip. We're gonna take all the hardware off. All right. You know guys, the hardware, it's fine. It's retro, it looks cool. It's got the E, the Elgin. You know if this brand is Elgin or Elgin? Anyway, we could always change out the hardware if we want a different style. This is kind of 50s looking. Whatever we do, we gotta save these screws. The screws are the important part. Yeah. Because they're, they're made for that cabinet door thickness. Since this door front is so bent up, I want to see if I can just pop it off so we can try to work with it. Ooh. Ew. What? Ew. They have some kind of like strange paper padding in here, probably to make the shelves feel less hollow, the drawer fronts feel less hollow. Guys, I'm glad I took that drawer front off because look how rusty it is underneath. So we're definitely gonna clean this up and put some, some kind of metal rust stop on there. I feel like the more we, the more we take apart, the easier it's going to be to refinish this. Honestly, we should probably take it all out so we can properly paint. Yeah. And do everything. Clean and paint. And... Are we painting inside here or just cleaning? I think we should hit it all. Clean it and then spray it all with the new stuff. Because it won't match. You know? Mm -hmm. the ones under the middle, or just tilt it back and we'll get them out. Go ahead. 
I'll just do all the bottom screws first. Yep. I hate to like disassemble the whole cabinet, but you no, kind of. I think it's part of doing it. To, to do it right, you kind of have to. You know, and I might be able to just find replacement screws that are new and not rusty. Yep. These don't look difficult. I was picturing it. Ruined. I think it's just glued. Yeah. Wow, that was easy. It was glued to those brackets right there. So I could see the brownness coming out. Yeah. Take these clips off now. Oh, that's cool. They got knockouts on the bottom for a sink drain and water. It looks like something leaked, like cleaning supplies. It's not wet, but it's wet. It's like something like yeah, was leaking soap or something. Yeah. I'm gonna try to scrape this off and just see how it goes. I'm gonna see what happens. Some of you guys are thinking that we are wasting our time on this old, nasty, rusted cabinet. And I just wanna clear up some of the comments, some of the questions about that cabinet and why we're using it. And I guess the first thing I need to say is that it's not about cost. Some people were comparing us buying new equipment and new tools to using this old cabinet. And it wasn't because of money savings, it was because of style. This is literally what we wanted. We wanted a vintage metal cabinet with the drain board sink. I've always loved them. I've always wanted one since I was like a teenager, literally. I've been into home design since I was a teenager. This is our chance to have one. Now, you guys might know this, you can't buy these new. If I could buy one new, I would buy one new. It's not about the money. You can't get these cabinets, you can't get these sinks. So I think it'll be cool if we can restore it and use it. For some reason, especially in the USA, Drain board sinks are very rare and I think that has to do with the fact that most people don't like washing dishes anymore. They have dishwashers. So why do you need a drain board? Well, dishwashers come with a whole host of reasons of why we don't want them and why we don't use them. I've never used one. Washing dishes by hand is so easy. It's so quick. It's so efficient. There's no reason for us to have a dishwasher. I know, resale value. We don't care. We don't want one. And it's never been a problem selling our other homes either. Right. So we just want this drain board sink. And the only way to make that happen is to buy an old one and to fix it up. Yep. That's what we're stuck with. And we are willing to put in the effort and the money to making that happen. Now, if it comes out really bad and it just doesn't work, We'll go another route, that's fine. But we have to at least try. Mm -hmm. 
So I hope that clears it up as to why we're doing this. We just love these sinks. They're really cool. It's going to fit the home. It's going to fit the theme. We just think it's going to be awesome. And you guys are going to like it when you see the finished product. Just like the home that we are restoring, where everybody thought it was a dump when we bought it, we can repair things. Yeah. I don't know. You just got to look past it and see what it could be. And that's what we're doing with this sink. We're going to take this project in steps so that it doesn't feel overwhelming to us. And that's why we put away all the drawers, all the doors, and all we have out here right now is the cabinet itself, the frame. We're going to focus on that without even thinking about the rest. Yeah, it makes it not seem so intimidating. Instead of having all these bits and pieces, fronts and backs, and oh. all, just th there's so much involved in yeah. the drawers. Guys, we're going to put it aside. We're going to start with this and we're going to see how it comes out. When we were shopping for paint, we saw this and we just said, let's give it a shot because this is an epoxy enamel. It's supposed to be very hard, very durable and made for metal surfaces, just like this. Bright white, it's supposed to go on smooth factory-like finish. So I'm thinking that while paint might be more prone to nicking and chipping if you hit it, this might be a little more durable because it's made for everyday use appliances. What's interesting about this is it says priming is not recommended. That makes me a little nervous because you're thinking you're going to leave all that metal unprimed. That's what they say. Not recommended. Yeah, just use it. Just use it. It does have the stops rust symbol and all they say is to brush the rust off, you know, wire brush, remove loose paint and rust with a wire brush and sandpaper. So the number one thing I can do right now is do my best to get rid of the rust so that the epoxy goes on good and we don't have to worry about it. I've seen people put it over like rusty fridges and stuff. It seems to work. So let's give it a shot. Yeah. Well guys, I just went through all the batteries I had. And I did what I could and I pretty much wore out that one rust pad. I don't know what it's called that brush I was using on the grinder. So I pretty much wore that through but I got rid of a lot of rust. It's working so good. The cabinet's looking awesome. We're gonna show it to you another day because there's not enough light for you guys to see it good. We got some pitted steel, we knew that, but most of it's intact and I feel like, I'm feeling optimistic. Yeah. We'll get those batteries charged. We'll do a little bit more. After we're done with that attachment, we're gonna go to sandpaper and we're gonna smooth it out to feather out the paint and just get it more ready to be painted. We'll come back to this project later, but that's all we have for now. So thanks for watching. And until next time, take care. See ya.